Hi friends, and welcome to a romanticy reading vlog. Since reading Iron Flame, I have been on a mission to feel the way I felt in Fourth Wing again. I want those epic vibes of just really rooting for a couple to be together, which led me to this reading vlog where I will just be reading romanticy books for however long. I'll probably just go until I feel like romanticy burnout and when I want to pick up an epic fantasy again instead of a fantasy romance book. I also will be prioritizing a polycon authors during this. I am going to a polycon in April and I really need to start reading more of those authors to figure out what I want to get signed and stuff. So this was a perfect time to just prioritize some of those. With that little explanation, let's get right on into the first book. I decided to pick up The Flame and Sparrow by S. Hem Gaither. I read The Song of the Marked last week by the same author, and I enjoyed the writing style, but something about the story just had me not connecting. So I thought, let's pick up her newest novel because she is going to be at a polycon so I want to see if I do like her style and like her writing was good enough for me in that one that I did still want to try another one. I'm 5% into this and I'm not vibing with it. I'm going to give it until I meet the love interest before I decide whether I'm going to DNF or not but I am leaning towards a DNF at this point. There's been a lot of info dumping and world building within these first couple chapters but it's really boring and not interesting and I kind of hate our main character. They're just whiny and annoying and very repetitive in their thinking and I just want a little bit more. However, the Song of the Marks had really good banter and that's kind of what I was hoping for. So I'm waiting till I meet that love interest because if there is good banter, I could turn my thoughts around really easily because mostly we've just gotten info dumping at this point. So I will update you in a bit with whether I'm continuing this or not. But I did just want to tell you that I started it for this vlog. I'm just getting ready to curl up to go to bed. But we have met the love interest. And I am going to stick this one out, I think. I don't think it's going to be a new favorite from me. But so far, it's enjoyable enough once you get past the significant amount of info dumping at the beginning. And I'm interested to see what happens between our two love interests and to see them go from enemies to lovers. Continuing this one on. I have made it to 50% into Sparrow and Flame. I have very mixed feelings upon this fantasy romance right now. Some parts of it I'm not loving and then some parts of it I'm like eating up and want to devour and I don't want to put the book down. I actually had to make myself go to sleep last night because I was in like such a good part of the story. I think that this author having read this and the song The Marked thrives in character interactions. Her banter moments are so amazing. I love when our two love interests are together and talking and I truly eat those moments up and want more of them. When we're not together though, when we're not with other characters, the book lulls for me. Even though her world building is good, there's something about it that just doesn't engage me. I think it's because a lot of it is done in info dumping and not in a natural way at times. So I really struggled with the beginning of this book because the first 30% our love interest isn't really in. I found the characters at the beginning very flat, but when we got to this like god realm, I love these characters. Even the non-love interest, like when we're having interactions with the two other gods that are like the friends, I like those moments. I think anytime we have scenes with other characters within the story, I want to keep reading. But whenever we're alone with our MC and in her head, I do truly struggle. And I think I felt very similar in The Song of the Marked. The other thing I could complain about is I don't know what it is because both of these stories have been slow burn, but also not. Like, yes, our couples are not like making out right at the start, but there's some kind of like insta-love attraction that still happens and doesn't feel as slow burn to me. Even though they're not admitting their feelings, I just feel like I don't get to see the connection build and the tension rise completely. It's just kind of like from the beginning, they have the hots for each other. Instead of finding the emotions to love each other and to want each other, they're fighting off those emotions, if that makes sense. Like from the very beginning, they're very into each other and they're trying to stop themselves from being into each other instead of not being into each other and slowly making their way into being each other. And I think that that isn't my favorite. I think I prefer seeing them fall in love then try to stop being in love. I will say like, I could pick up the second book right after this because I'm eating it up. I'm finding it very enjoyable and I love our character moments together. I 
I finished Flame and Sparrow last night and I'm so mad. I picked this up thinking it was a completed duology. It is not completed. I ended the first book. I got a little note at the end from the author that said, second book coming spring 2024. And I realized I had fucked up. I want that book now, like right now. I got so invested into the characters. Do I think that objectively this is a great fantasy romance? No. It would not go on the tier with like the top and the best fantasy romance. We're talking Akatar from Blood and Ash, Serpent in the Wings of Night, Fourth Wing, those incredible well-rounded stories. But it does go on the tier of just like popcorn fan row. When I didn't take this book too seriously, when I didn't think too hard about it, when I just let myself have fun with the characters, I really enjoyed it. I loved the friendships in here. I loved the banter. Every time that the ice god said something snarky, I laughed at it. Every time the god of change had a caring expression, I felt like we were building a friendship. And every time the god of fire said something, I fell apart because I love him. I really do love him. Yes, there is some insta love in this. There is some insta friendship in this. There are some plot holes. I did find the first 30% very hard to get through, like very hard, often thinking I should just DNF it. But once I got into the story, once I met the love interest, the banter just like kept me going. Like I just had fun reading this and I did become very invested in seeing our main character succeed and overcome the plot in this. And now I want book two because I want to know what's about to go down and I don't have book two. And how cruel is that? My plan was to binge. So I did just put a poll up on my Patreon for them to vote on like five fantasy romances that I have the Kindle book for because I do love reading fantasy romance on my Kindle for some reason. But I'm not sure if you'll see that book next or my audiobook next. One of the big problems with filming and vlogging sometimes is that I'm reading multiple books at once, but I prefer my vlogs to be a book and then a book and then a book instead of like a jumbled, I'm gonna call it a mess, but it, lots of people can pull it off. I'm just not one of those people of me reading bits of every book. I am currently reading an audiobook, but I'm also about to start a physical book. So I'm just not sure which one you will see first in this vlog. Whatever one I finish first, you'll probably see first, but I don't know which one I'll finish first. That's all I have to say. I'm taking it really easy today. I'm currently watching The Real Housewives of New York City Reunion. I just watched the newest season. I fell in love with the housewives that were at BravoCon. I thought that they were funny and it made me really excited to watch this season. I had fallen out of New York City a while ago, but obviously with a new cast, it was easy to like fall back into. And I did really enjoy this season. I enjoyed a cast that was full of people of color, not just white privileged women. Overall, had a good time with that. And then tonight I'm going to the Jonas Brothers with my friend. So I will try and document some of our terrible, terrible, terrible singing and dancing at the Jonas Brothers. So I'm just kind of taking it easy. I'm about to eat my apple that you saw me cut and my coffee and relax for the day. Well, I'm still grumpy that I can't read book two. first record label because our first album didn't do well enough. We thought that might be it. We considered uh, giving up right then and there. But instead we went down to our basement in our house in Little Falls, New Jersey, and we started writing songs about things that were real to us. 
first love, first heartbreak, and everything in between. And after about six months, we came out of that basement with a, a demo CD. Edmonton, you guys are crazy tonight. Wow. Honestly, a lot of fun. I think I've lost my voice a little bit, yelled too much. Joe is the main character of the Jonas Brothers. If you've seen them on tour, like Joe performs. Also Kevin, Kevin slays too, but like Joe is just, Joe is just so hot. <laughs> and he really, really performs. And like, honestly, Nick kind of let me down. Nick was just like, he was really stoic and chill. And Joe is just like, ooh, let's have fun. Like he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He is the main character, but also Kevin. Kevin like rocked that guitar so many times. That was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Obviously like singing some of like the favorites like Burning Up and Love Bug really get you going as well as like Happiness Begins and Waffle House. So yeah, it was a good concert. I'm gonna go shower now and then I'm gonna curl up in my bed and I'm gonna watch Dancing with the Stars because that was on tonight and see who went home. And I'm gonna go to sleep because it is already like midnight. But yeah, this, this is like my final look. I never showed anybody, but I had fun. I haven't read anything. Good night. It is the next day. I thought I'd be hurting a lot more than I am, so that's pretty good. But I just head out to Staples right there so that I can get my passport photos done so that I can actually go to a Polycon in April. I really need to get on my passport. Here is step one, the photos, and I'm about to do that. But I have been listening to A Kiss of Iron. My Canadian comes out when I say the word iron and I do not like it, so please ignore that, by Claire Sager. Claire Sager is new to the lineup for a Polycon. She was just announced, so I was really excited because this was a book that I really did want to try. Same with her book in the Monster Lovers to Mortal Enemies series that Krista Broadbent has slaying the Vampire Conqueror in. I'm listening to this one on audio. I'm on chapter 17, so I have made it a decent indent in. We just met the love interest. The two of them just like talked for the first time, and I did really like that scene. I liked at the very beginning with the setup with the world building, and then I liked that scene of them together, but it was lulling for a while. I was having a hard time wanting to pick it up because it was just very historical, and there wasn't a lot going on. But when we got to the scene of them together, like the dance at the ball, like I love a ball scene. I love a scene of them like sharing secrets on the dance floor and they're like so close together and they're trying to hide expressions from everyone else and I just like love a scene like that and I think that this one was done pretty well. I'm excited for our love interest. I think that he is going to be a little snarky and cunning and I'm really excited for that. Don't know how I feel about our protagonist yet. She's kind of boring doesn't have a lot of personality and I typically like a feistier character. I should probably tell you what this one is about because I don't think I told you what Flame and Sparrow was about. This one we follow our main character who lives in her husband's estate. I don't know how I feel about the husband part. Her and her husband aren't like in love they're just an arrangement. He has gone off she hasn't seen him in years and he has made a bunch of debt. Now the Fae are coming for their house and she's offered a bargain with one of the Fae to come to the ball and to court and try to find her way into another phase heart and manipulate him. And so we're watching our main character do that. Our love interest is the Fae that she's supposed to manipulate, obviously. I'm excited. I like that setup. I think it's going to lead to good, like, rivalry, but also good moments of, like, flirting and stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to keep reading this. I hope I really like it. I'm really, really hoping that Claire Sager is for me. I think her writing is pretty strong. It feels pretty polished to me. Anyways, let's go take my pictures. And then maybe in a little bit tonight, I will talk to you about the Goodreads Choice Awards because those were announced yesterday. I did not get back to you yesterday with the Goodreads Choice Awards, but I'm here to do that right now. 
it's kind of a bad moment for me to talk about it because I've been on Twitter doing the tweeting and have been a little annoyed at people. I've just seen so many elitist comments about the fantasy category in specific and about how people thought getting romanticy meant that we'd get less women-leaned fantasy. And I've really just seen people come for the fact that a lot of the list is girlier fantasy. And that just like really annoys me. I love epic fantasy. I am not one that is reading the books in the fantasy category because I don't love retellings and stuff, but I don't think that they don't deserve to be there because they are fantastical still in my opinion. It just really frustrates me. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the romanticy category because I was so excited we got one this year. I just think it's about time because every single year there is complaints about romanticy being in fantasy. So I was really excited we got one this year. Obviously Obviously, we already know who is winning. It is going to be a landslide that Fourth Wing wins. I think it deserves it. Pure perfection. I love all the love that this story got, but I was so excited to see other things in it. My vote went to A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden just because I was so utterly shocked that this was in here. All three of these covers look the same. <laughs> those are all indie, those last three. I'm so happy that that made it. <laughs> Not like my favorite out of all of the choices, but one that I think deserves so much more love, so I wanted to give it that love, and I do know that the Choice Woods can do so much for a book. Also was very excited and shocked that we got not one, but two Carissa Broadbends. Incredible, immaculate, amazing, chef's kiss. These are both so stunning. If a Dawn of Onyx hadn't gotten my vote, Ashes was. I'm expecting Ashes to make it to the second round and Dawn not to, so Ashes will get my vote in the second round. I don't think that this is the one that made it, but JLA having three books in the romantic category, I love that for her. She is so popular for a reason, and the fact that she had three series come out this year, and they were all loved, incredible. I'm expecting the continuation from, from Blood and Ash and the new series to make it to the next round, but I do think that the prequel one will leave. But honestly, I see people complaining that an author can have three or two, and I think as long as they aren't the exact same series, and there are arguments that from Blood and Ash and the prequel are, but as long as they're not the exact same series, I don't see a problem because they came out that year and that's the ruling. Very excited about the romanticy category. I think it was about time and I'm so excited to vote in it. I obviously love fantasy romance. I am an epic fantasy girly, but I am a fantasy romance girly. I love romanticy. There are people who exist that want to read James Islington. He is literally who I voted for in the fantasy category, but I was also very excited to see Mark Lawrence there. But there are some of us out here that love the style of like James Islington and John Gwynn and Brandon Sanderson, but I'm also gonna read Dragon Smut and Fairy Smut. Count me in. I like both. I love both. If you don't, that is okay. You don't have to. But I just hate that sometimes people don't think that they can overlap. And they do. I love both. And I don't think that I should be judged ever for liking one and the other. You know, that's all I have to say. Other than that, I have made it a little bit further into our read. I don't have a lot to say right now. I'm enjoying it still, but not loving it. I think it has a little bit too much romance for me. Every scene seems to be a romance scene, and I just want a little bit more plot woven into it. They also bang very early on, and if you know me, I'm a slow burn girly, so the fact that they are not as slow burn is affecting my enjoyment a little bit. But that's all I really have to say. I'm not far enough in. I think I will update you when I pass like 50% again. I don't know if I'm a Zelda girly. I haven't played a Zelda game in so long and a couple vlogs ago I think I talked about buying Tears of the Kingdom and I have started it, played it a few times, and I just forgot how often you can just get endlessly lost and not really know what to do in Zelda. And I'm not really the biggest fan of that. I do not like being lost. I do not like not knowing what I'm supposed to be doing. I get very frustrated and I do a lot of googling because I can't help it. I just want to be told exactly what to do. Step A, B, C, D, E. I don't think Zelda is necessarily for me so I'm still looking for more games. If you have any Switch game recommendations let me know. I am trying to be better at using my Switch because I enjoy it. I have read a little bit more of Kiss of Iron. I'm on chapter 47. 
I'm liking this book but not loving it. I like the plot. I love the discussions on women and women roles in a historical setting, a Regency setting like this. Women trying to get out of those roles, what they do to placate the men and what they experience in this world and what it means to have someone believe in you outside of those gender specific roles 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 that word sounds really funny to me so I do like a lot of this I love when our love interests are together and like having a little bit of banter I love them sneaking around I love a sneaking around relationship however there's just far too much smut in this and far too much romance I think the romance girlies will like this more than like the fantasy girlies I think it leans more historical romance it is fantasy there is fae, there is magic, but I wish we were getting more about the magic and stuff. But it does lean more to like the romance side to me than like the fantasy side. And I do typically like my fantasy romance to lean a little bit more fantasy. And I'm excited to try more from Claire Sager, regardless of what I give this book. And I think it will be a three star. Anyways, I'm gonna go watch The Voice because I missed it because I was at the Jonas Brothers on Tuesday and I watched with my parents, so I'm heading upstairs to go watch that with them. Okay, I finished A Kiss of Iron and I'm giving this book two stars. In the end, it just really wasn't for me. I think if you are a romance fan, you will like this a lot more than me, but by the end of the book, I just didn't really care about the plot. I feel like I didn't feel the escalation of the plot ever because it was really clear to me from the very beginning who the bad guy was. They were trying to make someone else the bad guy, but it was clear that this guy was the bad guy. And when we get the reveal, it didn't feel like a reveal. And even like the betrayal part didn't really impact me just because I already knew that these two had already grown to trust each other so much that it wasn't really going to be that big of a problem. I don't know. Overall, I just think I didn't really connect to this story. I didn't love it. It was too much smut, too much romance, not enough plot and fun banter. I think we lose the banter really early on in this. Not my vibe, but if you are more of a romance reader than I am, pick it up still because you could still like it. I just really want good plot and good banter. That's what I'm searching for. On to the next one. I'm just curling up to start my next read, which is going to be A Kingdom of Shadow and Ash by H.R. Moore if Mickey would get off of my e-reader so that I can read. Oh, Mickey, you are something. Do you ever read a first chapter of a book and think that wasn't very good, but like, is it too early to DNF? Sadly, I think that's what I just experienced. I didn't like that chapter, but I keep telling myself that I'm going to wait until I meet the love interest in every fantasy romance because that's like what I'm in it for. But apparently this love interest doesn't come till 50% and it's quite a long book. So I don't know what to do. I might try one more chapter and then I'm going to sleep on it and see how I feel in the morning. If I'm wanting to pick it up again in the morning, I'll continue. It's so sad when you're excited about a book and so early on you think, probably not for me. The writing style and the dialogue was just not it. It feels like you were thrown into a story that's already been going. I don't know. And then I was looking at Goodreads reviews and they didn't seem that good and I, I don't know. I'll let you know in the morning. I did decide to DNF this book. I woke up this morning and thought, no, I'm not reading that. I just like really didn't vibe with the writing style. Looking at reviews, I think that I would probably side with a lot of the reviews that weren't the most in love with it. And there's just so many books and so many Apollycon authors I still wanna check out that it's not worth it. So instead I decided to start The Curse of Saints. I'm only one chapter into this and already I think the writing style is so much better. I'm excited to continue this. I liked how we kicked off. We already learned a little bit about the magic system. I'm not just feeling like I'm thrown into the story, but it is action packed and engaging and I'm excited to continue. I just got to Nick's for the weekend. He just fixed my tire. Well, fixed. My tire is leaking, so we had to put air in it, but I do need to go to Canadian Tire. We were gonna patch it, but we think it's like my rim seal isn't sealed properly, and they can't do that here at their house, so I will have to go to Canadian Tire and get it actually fixed, which is annoying. You gotta do what you gotta do for cars, but I just like pulled back out front because I don't park in the back of his house. This is all too much information that you guys don't care about. I haven't read yet, so I don't even know why I'm updating you. I was just honestly coming here to celebrate that Fruitcake was released today, which is Sabrina Carpenter's Christmas EP, and like, a nonsense Christmas is iconic, amazing chef's kiss. So I was so excited, and I listened to this all the way here. A nonsense Christmas is still my favorite. Is it New Year's yet? 
loved that. Like, I love the vibe of that. I love when artists make new Christmas songs. I'm not a big fan of, like, the covers of the classic Christmas songs, but if you put out an album with, like, brand new Christmas songs, I will eat that up. Justin Bieber's Christmas album goes on repeat every Christmas season. It's iconic, incredible. A Nonsense Christmas, though, if you're looking for just, like, a funny, silly good time, listen to A Nonsense Christmas. That's all. I have not read anything. I have my coffee, ate my smile cookie already, and it's gonna be a good day. So, no reading has been done, but... The man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> that was weird, uh, <laughs> decided to teach me how to make a beat. So I made my first ever beat, and no, we're not talking vegetable beat, a music beat, and you guys get to hear it. It is a casting exclusive now. So here you go. This is what the thing looks like. It's very confusing, but Nick walked me through it, and here you go. I did good. I got home from Nick's a few hours ago so that I could join Tori from Tori Between the Pages. She did sprints this morning and I wanted to join them because she kindly asked me. I can talk about it later. Check out your book. <laughs> I'm currently reading The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas. Dramas? I never know how to say things. Oh. Um, this is like the perfect time to be on your channel because I'm actually working on like a romanticy vlog. And I was like, this is like meant to be because i'm reading <laughs> romance so are you liking that book? if you don't already follow tori you definitely should especially if you are watching this and you are a fantasy romance fan a romanticy girly she's one of my go-to channels to find out about romanticy but she also does read other things including like epic fantasy we were on sprints talking about how much she loves like the witcher another girly that does read both romanticy and epic fantasy if you watched my rant earlier. I've made a dent into The Curse of Saints. I am 20% in and I'm really, really enjoying this one. It has a lot of world building, which I really appreciate in a fantasy romance, but it's not solely world building at this point. Like I am seeing moments of the relationship come together and seeing our character growth. It's not just like plot info dumping constantly. We follow our main character who is the queen's spy master. In this world, the queen has its own specific special army that all has magical affinities. The queen is trying to prevent war and like dark magic from becoming a thing again because there's like a whole lore and myth around why they're not as powerful as they used to be and things like that within the world. And I think what we're gonna see is the dark magic come again, like it's gonna get stronger, people are gonna start using the dark magic and we're gonna have to see our main character fight against it. But this does say, has she been sent to save the world or destroy it? And we've seen hints of like her magical capabilities. I'm just finding the world really interesting at this part. I will say at times it's a little bit muddy. Like I don't understand a hundred percent of where everything is. I almost feel like I need to get a notepad and like start writing out facts and a map and how things connect and all of that because sometimes that can be helpful but I'm enjoying it I think it's unique I'm finding it interesting and engaging and I'm loving our two characters I feel like not often in a fantasy romance because I read enemies to lovers not often do they know each other prior and the man that I think is going to be the love interest because we have had his POV him and her have known each other because they grew up training to be one of the queen's soldiers together, but they've always kind of had a rivalry from what I get. And I love forced proximity. And I think often we think of forced proximity in terms of like they're on a horse together or they're stuck in a bedroom and they have to sleep in the one bed. But I also can think of forced proximity as like they're forced to work together. They have a blood oath to protect each other in this. And even though they don't like each other, they're obviously still looking out for each other because of that. So I'm loving our moments of banter because you see them clash because they've been competing their entire lives to get like first officer essentially but you also see their like connection already. And I'm really excited to see where that goes, how the relationship changes. I'm really, really enjoying this so far. I hope I continue to love it because right now I'm really liking it. 
I'm probably gonna read a little bit more today. Tonight I'm off to the Eras tour concert movie with my sister. So I'll be going for dinner and then the movie with her, which I'm excited because I think it's leaving theater soon. And obviously living in Edmonton, I did not go to a concert. I love Taylor Swift. So I'm excited to go finally see it. I've seen it like live streamed on TikTok, but like to see it in, in theaters, I think with like the surround system is gonna be so much fun. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Ooh, fancy. I have made a serious dent into the Curse of Saints. I'm really liking this. Where, yes, I picked this up for a fantasy romance vlog, thinking it would be like very romanticy leaning. This reminds me more of like Throne of Glass than Akatar. Like it leans towards fantasy with romance, not romanticy. But there's still a heavy plot of romance. And if you don't like romance, I wouldn't like recommend picking this up. Like it leans towards YA fantasy. You know how every YA fantasy has romance? That's what I would say that this could be, except for I think that we're going to get spice. I don't know how to, else to explain it. If you know, you'll know. But I am loving the plot in this. I think it's so good and intriguing. The world building, I said it earlier, it's still muddy to me. I still don't understand exactly how it works. But there is a lot of political intrigue going on. There's a lot of wondering who's on what side. Those are all like buzzwords for me when it comes to a book. Like I want to be questioning constantly if I think that you're on my side or not. There is a bit of a love triangle in this for people who aren't love triangle fans. But I think it's a love triangle triangle with a clear winner. It kind of reminds me of the love triangle in the Air Awakened series if you've read that. Not a Twilight love triangle. I don't know how to really explain this without just like referencing other books which is something I need to work on because what if you haven't read those books? Overall, I'm loving this. I love Will. I think that he is so much fun. I love a like I would love to for you. MC. I just want to see him do it. I want to see him burn the world down for her. I've loved their rivalry. I think the setup is so good. There's a lot of elements that I am really liking about this. Now I do think the pacing is off and the world building could use some work. I don't think it's going to be a five star but like who knows at this point. I'm sitting at like a solid four in this moment of time. So we're gonna see. My plan for the night is to finish this. So hopefully you will get an update. I do have Dancing with the Stars to watch tonight. It's been a whole week. Tonight's Taylor's night, which is exciting. And I have popcorn left over from the movie. I will be eating my popcorn from the Taylor Eras concert movie while watching Taylor Night on Dancing with the Stars. And also I have a plan to work on my genre blanket. I'm currently end of May in it. So I have some serious catching up to do. <laughs> Chapter 55 is clearly the best chapter. Can I give a book four stars for literally one character? Like, I love Will. Everyone else falls flat. But Will deserves, like, five stars. Is it appropriate to give this book four stars just because of how much I love him? Ugh, this the scene of him being jealous was so good. I'm giving it 3.5. I do not give out half stars very often, but I do think that this deserves that 0.5. There are a lot of things I liked about this book and some things that didn't 100% work for me. I think it's very important to tell you that I would call this YA fantasy, not fantasy romance. Like a YA fantasy romance for sure, but not like a romanticy. The author note actually does say that she's inspired by Victoria Aveyard, Saba Tahir, and Lee Bardugo. And I do think like this book fits into the category of like these books. Like it fits very well. It reminds me more of the style of these than it does the style of these. So I do think that there is like a difference in what you're getting and what you're wanting out of this story. There's a lot more plot. We're not getting the romantic scenes the way we do in a romanticy. 
but they're still there. They're still incredible. I These are my favorite YA series, and I think it fits the vibe quite well with these. I'm excited to see where book two goes. I plan on picking it up. I'm really excited with how this overall went. I stand by the fact that Will carried this book. Without Will, I don't think I would have loved it, but with Will, it's incredible, amazing. He was the character I was interested in at all times. Overall, I think that things that kept me back from this is that other than Will, the other characters could use a little bit more character development and work, as well as the pacing was kind of off. I really liked the start and I really liked the end, but some of the middle was a little bit slower. The world building was a little murky at times. I'm not 100% sure where all the factions go, but I loved the political intrigue in this. I loved seeing the chess pieces move. I loved Will. Any scene with Will. Any scene with Will. I was in it. I'm really excited to see where book two goes. I loved the epilogue of this. I'm really excited. I think that this has the ability to be a new favorite YA series from me, which is really exciting. I also did start A Court This Cruel and Lovely this morning. I don't know what to tell you about this one. I feel like I'm getting embarrassed just talking about it. Oh, secondhand embarrassment. Sometimes from even liking books is a thing. This is your basic fantasy romance. <laughs> We're talking child who never knew that her mom is not actually her mom and she was like stolen or kidnapped or saved. She was gonna die and this mom like adopts her. We're talking Faye who are big, bad, ruthless. We're talking an MC who has to run away because she has powers and she's not supposed to have powers and she runs into this Faye and she doesn't realize they're Faye and, and she has to learn all about how history has been wrong and history is created by the victors and all of that. How far in am I? I'm on chapter seven and we've already had a one horse scene. Like this feels like an author is writing out all their favorite fantasy romance tropes. But the thing is, I like what I like and she likes what she likes and she's writing what she likes and I like what she likes. And so like, yes, I do think it's cringe, but I'm here for it. I am truly, truly here for it. Catch me going beet red all the time during this. If you haven't already gotten the idea behind what the story is, we're following our main character who grows up in a world where the gods take their magic when they're born and then they get their magic back at 25. But for some people, the gods don't take their magic and that's bad. And at 25, when you go to get your magic back, if they find out you still have magic, you and your entire family is murdered. I loved that setup. I thought that was super fun. Our main character, still has her magic when people find out she has to run away and she runs into the big bad Faye, who we also have POVs from and I like him. He's like brooding and makes fun of her all the time and I'm here for it. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Oh hi, it's me again. I've made it 30% into A Court This Cruel and Lovely and we just had our first kiss. This book is so cringe, but like, I'm having fun. We've had a one bed trope. We've had a one horse trope. We've had a good girl. We've had a training sequence. We've had so many of those like staple loved fantasy romance thingies moments happening. And I'm eating all of them up, but I'm also sitting here like, what am I reading? Like if they talk about each other's like tight rear end again, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I, I have so much second anniversary, but like I'm liking it. What's wrong with me? Okay, I've read another 10% of this book and it's lost me. We left the love interest. We are no longer with the male love interest and I'm not interested at all. Like we're trying to give it plot, but the first 30% of this was just cringy bantering love fest that I was into. And now we've left the love interest and I'm just like, where did he go? Bring me back. I want him back, please. Like, this was just so rude of the book to leave me hanging like this after, like, one kiss. No! Bring him back! I'll keep you updated. Next update's not gonna be for a while, though. I feel like... I feel like I don't have anything else to say, probably, throughout the story. My prayers were answered. He's back. Oh, this gives, like, spooky atmosphere. Next time I do, like, a horror vlog, this has to be the lighting. I finished the book. I'm giving it four stars. I don't know what's wrong with me. Not that it's embarrassing to like this book. I feel like I need to say that. You like what you like and you be proud of what you like and I am proud of what I like and I'm happily talking about it on the internet. However, this is not a Cassidy type book. 
and that is okay too. And my secondhand embarrassment just can get so high sometimes in books for some odd reason um, that I'm, I'm gonna tell you that I, I liked this. I'm not sure why. This was just like not an original fan row. Like there's nothing original about this. If you've read one fantasy romance, you've read this book, but it was so enjoyable. I liked the plot in the end. I know earlier I was talking about how boring the plot was. It escalated. It helped the romance along. I ended up really liking the plot. I liked where he went. I'm excited to pick up the next book. And book two and three are already out. This came out this year and book two and three are already out. Someone did me a favor. Someone knew I needed a really simple, popcorn binge fan row. I feel like this is just like what you put on when you have stuff to do and you just want something light and fun to listen to. This is perfect. I'll be listening to this and playing Zelda for sure because I feel like I don't have to listen too hard to enjoy this story and I need that when I play video games. So this just like worked out really well. This is like perfect for me and I had so much fun with these two love interests. The reveal at the end, not shocking at all, because if you've read any fan row, it's the reveal that we were expecting, but I lived for it. I lived for it so hard. I was like banging down the door with her. I was like, you freaking lied to us. Even though I knew it the entire time. Incredible. She had his kiss. I had so much fun. Now I am about to start the coven. I'm going to curl up. I'm gonna read the first couple chapters of this tonight and then I'm gonna watch TV. I don't know what I'm gonna watch, but I'm gonna watch TV and I'm gonna have a good sleep. I ended up at Staples again for the second time in this vlog. This time it was for more exciting things. I had to pick up some things for Ramadan because hosts officially got invited this week. So I have my Ramadan host and I'm really excited. So I'm sending them their bookmarks and I just had to pick up the thing that's going in the bookmark when you buy them, which is really exciting. I'm not going to show you because I, <laughs> I can do that. While I was there, I also picked up gel pens. Look at them. Stunning. Because Hannah from Hannah's Recent Reads, when I asked her like how do you make your annotations so dang cute, she's like, I just use a lot of gel pens. And I'm a very like uncolorful person. I'm definitely very like monotone and neutral with like things I want. So I picked up just like a gold, a black, and a silver that are like metallic. So I'm hoping that will help me make my annotations a little cuter. And then I ended up hopping over to Michael's and buying brush lettering pens pretty much in these same colors for the things that go in the bookmarks because these will be needed. But I also did start the coven. I'm not far in. I'm only like three chapters in. I've heard from some people that this is like crack. It's like a silly goofy good time book, which the last book was. So I was like unsure if I was willing to do two silly goofy good time books back to back. I have read from this author before. I read her other series, What Lies Beyond the Veil, and my friends didn't like this one, but I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. I thought it was fun. What is making that noise? Must be a plane. I thought it was fun, predictable, but I enjoyed it, so I was excited to do this one. I feel like this one, I already can tell, writing has been polished. Now, at this point, I think she's written three books for the other series, and then this is her fourth book. I think you can tell I'm liking the writing style. I've seen our two love interests meet at this moment in time. They've had an interaction together. It was not a good interaction, but they have had one, and I'm interested in it. I obviously didn't read the back of this book. I had no clue that it was going to be like a headmaster to student relationship, but the back of the book and the synopsis make it pretty clear that that's what's gonna happen. It doesn't bother me, but for those who it does bother, it's out there. Um, I read it in terms of its fiction. I can read things that are toxic and be okay with that, and that's kind of how I feel about reading a book like this. But I am interested. The world was cool, like seeing the opening scene with the dead people that talk, but are just like bones. That was so creepy. I love the atmosphere setting of this. I'm excited for her to get to the school because it is a school setting, which I love. So overall, my first initial thoughts are pretty good on the coven. Now let's go home and do boring stuff. We need to talk about the coven because last time I left you, I think I was liking it. And now I'm not so sure. But before I get into my thoughts, I still need to tell you what this book is even about. Essentially, we're following our main character who's a witch and she's like the last of her bloodline. There was some like secret death fake death thing that people didn't know that she existed. When they find out that she exists, she's forced to go to this like magical school for witches where they're like hidden from humans and prejudice and things like that. But there's something very off and sus happening at this school and she has 
also been raised to like hate the school and the society and she's there to like take it down from the inside. It's it's a whole lot. So I think a lot of people will like this because of the nature connection. There's a lot about like burying the witches in certain ways. So like they have soil around them or they're buried with rocks so that their power goes back to the ancestors and then can go to a new person. I think if you're more into like a nature loving story, you could like this more than me. In some ways it reminds me a lot of the nature of witches, which I personally didn't like. There's something about the style story that doesn't really work for me and I find a little bit boring, which is also why I didn't like the nature of witches. Now the other part of the story that I really hate is the romance and I'm reading this for the romance so that's not a good thing. How do I say this? It's all sex. There's no chemistry between these two besides the fact that they want to bang each other. No chemistry. On top of the toxic relationship that I can get over and I can enjoy, editing cast here to tell you that the toxic relationship, him being the headmaster, had no effect on the story and did not need to exist. He could have just been someone at that school. He did not need to be the headmaster, which almost annoys me more because like you were just doing it for the taboo, not because it made sense to the story. He's crazy. Creepy. Like, literally creepy. Like, I don't understand how someone could be into him after one scene in this book that I found completely repulsive and creepy. And that could be a me thing, but like, after that one scene, I pretty much wrote this book off. I should DNF it, but I'm a completionist and I want to complete it. There's only like an hour left in the audiobook for me, so I'm gonna complete it and then I'm gonna come back and I'm probably gonna rant to you about it. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of Her Soul to Take, and I also hated that book with a passion. If you have have seen me rant about it, you'll understand. I think it was in Becca's book too, Bestie at the beginning of the year. I just like don't like books that are all smut for smut. That's that's a me thing. That's not a book thing. I understand why people could like this book, but I, I'm just not one of those girlies. And I know that. I want tension and slow burn and building and fun banter, not whatever this is. Not just like having sex every five seconds. Like every five sentences, they are having sex or talking about having sex. And it's just like, I'm, I'm not about it. I'm really not about it. Sorry, I'm, I'm escalating. I'm escalating. I'm escalating. I'm gonna go finish this book and I will escalate after. <laughs> To literally, no one surprise, I hated this book. What did I just read? I'm gonna cry because I don't know what I just read. I, <laughs> that was not a book for Cassidy. If you like it, props to you. I understand why some people could like it. I'm just not this person. I just want a lot more tension and build up in my romantic relationships. There's also a lot of plot holes for me in this. And that comes down to, I think, giving us a male POV and then having all these twists and turns at the end that are so unbelievable to me because we've seen his POV throughout the entire time. And that would require him to be lying to himself the entire time because you're supposed to be reading as him in his own body. Just the way it was told just didn't work for me and then like our main character does literally nothing besides talk she's there for a reason and she's searching for something but i don't think she searched for it once like she is so dumb i just prefer my mcs to have a lot more smarts like i just i don't even know how else to say it like she just relies on everyone else and just like trusts everyone blindly like literally they say one thing to her and she trusts them even like the witch coven, at one point they come to warn her and she she hasn't trusted them this entire time and has been like taught to hate them and they say one thing to her and she's like, oh shit, I'm gonna take you seriously. What? Like, like she just, the characters made no sense to me. I don't know what to say. I did not like this. I'm giving it one star. Um, <laughs> I laughed so hard at this ending because like, it just, what did I just read? There's a line at the ending that I just like, what did I read? And like, oh, there's so much scenes about sexual things that were not needed, like, at all. Like, at all. Like, the scene with the dress and where she has to decide which dress she wants to wear because one will be like, I'm willing to let someone sleep with me is so weird and unnecessary and didn't add anything to the plot line. Especially because even if they choose not to let someone sleep with them, they have to take their bra and panties off for that scene. And it just like, why? I, if you've read, you'll know. But if you haven't read, you won't know. Like also, I don't really know because like, I feel like what I read was just a fever dream and I would love to have not experienced it. I did not like this. This is just not a Cassidy book at all. At all. Kind of sucks to be ending this vlog on this point, but after that, I need something new. <laughs> So we will be ending this vlog. I actually have already filmed my outro at this point. So let's, let's go to that. And um, I'm sorry you had to see this. This was not good. I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself now. Like, 
What did I just read? Who told me to read this? How does it have so many good ratings? I don't understand. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this past like week and a half. I truly don't know if I've reached fantasy romance burnout, but it is time for me to start prioritizing those spiffbo finalists. So I think I need to retire this video, which also means you get to see it. And that's exciting because you were waiting for it. Well, you weren't really waiting for it because you didn't know it was gonna happen. But as soon as you saw this in your subscription feed, you were waiting for it. You just knew that you had been waiting for this moment. <laughs> You're welcome. I got a couple wins in this. There's still so many authors I need to prioritize reading before April, so you probably will get another vlog like this at some point down the line. Let me know down below if you have any fantasy romance recommendations, if you plan on picking any of these up, but also if you just want to leave me an emoji to say you were here, leave me a potion emoji. I feel like that fits the vibe. And if you want to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstore, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day.